I'd be dying over time, but uh, let's see what I've come up with in my little presentation here. Um, I'm going to present to you a case story uh, about uh, something I did with my strategy course last year. It's a third year foundation course in strategy that runs in seven classes, uh, four of them in parallel and um, one online. Same, uh, the same structure, basically. And uh, I made a comparison between, uh, in the learning experience between the class that I have in uh, Bergen on the west coast of Norway and the online class. And um, the reason why I did that was to find out are there any systematic differences when you have the same person in, uh, in the class and, on, and on, online. And to find if there are some elements that you could build upon when you are uh, changing your curriculum or uh, improving your course or whatever the case might be. So uh, what I did well, very practically was to compare the courses where I made a survey to the students and um, I, I compared the courses on the textbook because we had a new Norwegian textbook uh, started last year and um, I asked them about uh, how they liked the theme videos, how they liked other videos that we had, um, interviews with industry people from, uh, for instance, the, uh, chief, one of the chief executives of the Scandinavian Airlines. Um, what about the content of the lectures? What about the quality of the lecturer? And uh, what do you think about the face group we established? What do you think about the learning management system we had? Uh, we, we ran some tutorials online. What did you think about that? And we ran other tutorials on Padlet, which is sort of a notice board that you can have uh, that you could sort of pin your questions to. And this is sort of a book that develops uh, over time. So we had, at the end of the semester, we had more than 500 questions and answers in that book. And uh, for those of you uh, that are not familiar, we are running quizzes with, with Kahoots, which I'm proud to say was a Norwegian invention. And uh, we are doing a lot of Kahoots and uh, throwing out chocolate bars to the winners and uh, making a lot of fuss. But it's, it's great fun. And uh, last but not least, we did some traditional lecturing online. Now, what did the students say? We, uh, I, made this, um, I made this survey and um, <clears throat> as you can see there, there's a scale from one to five. And um, <clears throat> I, I noted out some of them, as you can see, with a red dot. Um, and those marked with an asterisk there, I could uh, sort of with a t-test say that there's a significant difference. The textbook was, uh, the online people liked that better than the classroom people. The videos were, they accepted those. Um, and um, the other videos as well was more appreciated by the online students than the classroom students. The Facebook group was, as you can see, um, I'll come back to the lecture content and quality later. Uh, the Facebook group was, uh, as you can see, very close. So that was sort of an expectation, both for the classroom people and the online people that we would run a, um, a Facebook group. Uh, the tutoring online was, uh, was uh, the learning management system was sort of an established standard anyway, so, so there was no difference there. Uh, but the tutoring online was, as you can see, dramatically different. Uh, because it says itself, really. That's sort of banging in an open door, but um, uh, it's there. The tutoring on Padlet was uh, also something that we introduced uh, to the classroom students and the online students, and that uh, came out about the same. The Cahoots were very popular. Lecturing online was... Uh, uh, of course, more popular among the, the online students. And uh, as you can see, the total approval of the, uh, of the quality of the course was dramatically different between the online people and, and uh, the classroom people. And this made me wonder, why is that? How can it be so? It's the same guy, it's the same curriculum, the same videos, same everything. But the different must be, difference must be within the audience, of course. So that's what, um, uh, so I, I came to some conclusions. Why are the online students more satisfied? And of course, there is a difference in age, maturity, and backgrounds. 
Um, uh, the online courses were also much more females than males. Um, that could be a factor in itself. Um, and also, the, the, the online is uh, regarded as a more modern approach. Because when we, when we did uh, these online components uh, into the classroom, the students sometimes felt that this was something that was, it shouldn't have been there. Uh, we are here in a classroom. Why the hell are you putting us online? So, uh, so because some of the students looked at us as sort of a, a waste of time especially when we did two hours of lecturing in the classroom and the last hour uh, on online tutoring. They said, well, this is, this is nonsense. So, uh, we, um, uh, so the blending is more challenging for the students in the classroom uh, if they come from sort of a classroom environmental setting. Now, what is planned and structured from the outset, sort of the psychological contract between the students and, uh, and the professor. That works well, even with the large classroom. And um, uh, the Padlet is a very good example of that. Uh, that was appreciated uh, across the, uh, the aisle. Um, but the classroom students were, because of that, that setting, less flexible. They were in a sort of a classroom mode which makes it more challenging to do blended uh, activities. And online students can concentrate more, they have less disturbances, there are uh, nobody next to you is surfing on an interesting site on YouTube or whatever. Uh, and um, uh, one experience that I have with online teaching is, it sounds like a contradiction in terms, but, but I find that you get closer to the students through the chat that comes uh, we use Adobe Connect to uh, do our webinars, and that works extremely well. So even if we do a traditional lecture with the chat line open and, uh, and uh, answering the questions as sort of on the fly, we feel that we are also as a teacher that we are getting closer to the students. So I'm going to delve more, more into this uh, this year, but um, I, I just updated some data for us. Uh, this is a classroom from Oslo, and I, I talked speci uh, measured specifically uh, what the quality of the webinar was, still on the scale from 1 to 5. And as you can see, the webinar quality was 4.61 with a large classroom. So they, enjoy, they, they are getting used to it when we plan it more specifically. And uh, does it help you in your learning? 4.13. Thank God, it helped. Um, and for the webinars uh, online, it was 4.7 and 4.54 for the same quality and for the same questions. So I'm proud of that because it shows that we are moving in the right direction. So, um, so I'm going to, uh, to uh, do a lot more of this uh, over the next, uh, next year. I'm going to turn around some of the old concepts and, uh, and uh, try to introduce something, some new modes. And of course, video works, especially when you make a title like this. Here you get the whole curriculum in 15 minutes. So it had, you can see the peak there, that was the day before the exam. <laughs> and it, <laughs> you know, Norwegians are known for what we call shipper talk, which is me, the meaning all hands on deck at the very last minute. Um, so, uh, as you can see the peak here, 3,600 uh, uh, among 2,000 students. So, uh, you can see there the exact exam date, the day after the peak. So, what are my homegrown advice for advancement of, of uh, blended learning and uh, online? Well, um, I greatly encourage using thematic videos. Make recordings of five to seven minutes on a theme and use social media as much as you can. And think holistically, that means that you are planning, planning the course from start to, uh, to end and, um, and put a lot more resources into webinar tutoring, especially with the large classes. When we run classes up to 250, 300 people, it works, believe it or not. But you have to stay flexible, you have to have, uh, have uh, your ears open and you have to uh, adapt along the way. And, um, 
stay close to them, be available, answer them on, uh, on Facebook, and uh, then they, are, they seem to be satisfied as some of my numbers uh, indicated. So, that's it, best of luck. Thank you.